in the gospel that we've just heard there are some wonderful scenes of friendship and intimacy just in those few hours of Jesus's life that we see in this gospel passage that he's in the house of Peter and Andrew his friends sharing their life Peter's mother-in-law is sick and he goes to her and he reaches out his hand takes her hand and lifts her up the gentleness and the power of his healing touch then in the evening the whole village is crowding round the door of Peter's house and Jesus is coming to each person one by one and greeting them talking to them touching them healing them casting out devils healing afflictions and problems and worries and burdens and then in the middle of the night Jesus going away from the crowds to the countryside but not to be alone a different kind of intimacy Jesus seeking intimacy with God the Father in prayer and solitude and when you hear all of this or just when you hear little bits I hope you feel in your heart I wish I could have been there if only that could have been me to actually see his face to actually hear the voice of Jesus to have the conversation that you've always wanted to have to ask that question that no one has ever been able to answer if only I could have that personal experience how different my faith would be my ordinary life today and so it raises the question of the meaning of personal experience in our Christian faith it's something that theologians have debated for centuries but just let me put it to you very personally just not to make it sound abstract just imagine that you're in the street in Gower Street and there's one of these people with the clipboard doing a survey from some institution the survey and they ask you about religious faith they say are you a Christian and you say yes probably and you tick the box and they say what's your denomination and most of you would say well I'm Catholic and they tick the box and they say do you believe in God and most of you probably would say yes and they tick the box but then the next question they ask you is have you ever had a personal experience of Jesus Christ have you ever had a personal experience of Jesus Christ what would you say to them there in the street and I just just have a think for a minute I'll just pause and I don't worry I'm not going to get you to stand up and testify afterwards just what would you say to that question well you can tell me after and it's interesting and my first thought is I'm not sure about this language I'm not sure for two reasons because first of all it makes us it makes it seem as if there are two categories of Christian it's very binary those who've had a personal experience tick and those who haven't cross the sheep and the goats yes or no but secondly because the very idea of experience means so many different things to different people doesn't it one person's experience of Jesus for example reading the Bible quietly in the morning might not be another person's going to a loud Christian praise and worship service on a Friday evening my personal relationship which might be expressed for me by praying the rosary might take a very different shape from yours which might be writing a prayer diary in the evening or whatever and even when you think of the sacraments that my love for Jesus in the Mass might be experienced in quite a different way from your love and even the same experience if we have the same experience might be expressed in a very different way so the idea of experience is is complicated it's simplistic it's inadequate 
etc. Here am I having this conversation with this poor person with the clipboard. They just want to tick or cross. But on the other hand, there's something good about this language. Because if we understand it properly, we do all need and long for a personal experience of Jesus. And I would use, to help us to understand it properly, a more traditional language and simply say that each Christian, each of us here, hopes to have a living faith. A living faith. Or we'll put it another way, a personal faith. And you notice I've taken out the word experience because it be, can be confusing. But a living faith, a personal faith. A faith where my love for the Lord is more personal, is more alive, is more committed than it used to be. Where there is a deeper sense of friendship with the Lord, of intimacy, whatever form that takes. Where I begin to understand what faith really means for me, the importance for me, for others. And I begin to go deeper in my understanding of what that invitation to prayer is. Not just to praying or racing through prayers, but what the relationship of prayer means for me and the Lord. And back to the sacraments, that, that what it means to go deeper for me personally in loving the Lord in the sacraments. It's all about... A kind of conversion, but again I'd use that word carefully. A conversion meaning a movement, a growing, a depth, a deepening. Maybe from an abstract to a living faith. Maybe you might say from the head to the heart. Maybe from a habitual faith, which is a good thing. It's good to have habits, but to a deeper personal commitment. Another kind of conversion, and it's all connected maybe, for many of you that were brought up in Catholic families, is from an inherited faith, a faith that you inherited from your family, from your Christian culture maybe. And this is a good thing. Thank God we inherit faith. But that that inherited faith becomes really my own, my, my possession, my, my prize, my joy, my own personal decision, my personal faith. Just to connect this with other traditions, many of you are from the charismatic movement, charismatic renewal, you would probably put all of this movement, this conversion, under the heading of the baptism in the spirit. And it doesn't just mean a one-off powerful experience of the Holy Spirit, although it can mean that. It means all these different ways that as adults we are deepening our faith. We are growing in a personal relationship with the Lord. How does this conversion happen? This growing? Well, again, just very, very many different ways. Um, it's a bit random, this. I'm I was just putting myself in your shoes, thinking back to when I was at university as an undergraduate many years ago. And some of the things that changed me, um, one of them was just sitting in the chapel in the evening. I'd been to Mass in the daytime, but to have a, a chapel like, like our own, and just to remind you, this chapel is open till 9.30 every night, um, to sit in the silence of the evening in the chapel really shifted something in me. Another one-off thing, actually, uh, you know I've been promoting this retreat at Worth that we've got in March. I think there's one place left, so you can grab it if you want. Well, for me, the first retreat I ever went on as an undergraduate at 19 was to Worth. And that really, really touched me. My first time to be in a monastery, to be away, to pray in the night in a chapel again, and, and to be with others in that way. But something else very simple for me was, was reading um, I remember in my first year at university reading the story of a soul, the, the autobiography of St. Therese of Lisieux. And you see, this, this wasn't a walking down the, the street and the spirit zapping me. This was just me reading this book over a few weeks and Therese speaking to me and the Lord speaking to me through Therese and something in me going deeper and growing and becoming more personal. 
sometimes, this is why I mention these little anecdotes, sometimes the deepening is a powerful, life-changing experience. Something we never forget. And I know from talking to you, many of you, that these moments have happened to you and how important and beautiful they are. Something happens. The Lord steps in and he speaks to us, inverted commas. He touches us, often in unexpected, profound ways, ways we couldn't predict. Something happens and it touches us. But other times it is gradual. It's, it's a growing. It's, it's like the dawn, the, the, the sun rising in the dawn. Um, well, that's, that only takes an hour or two. Maybe it's even more gradual. Maybe it's like the oak tree growing, yeah? taking many years. But there really is growth. And we look back and we see that there was dry earth. Now there's a shoot. Now there's a shrub. Now there is a, a magnificent oak tree. And this is our faith and our friendship with the Lord. Sometimes it hits us by surprise. Sometimes, and maybe this is for you, sometimes it is a choice. It feels more like I am searching for God rather than God is searching for me, although they're always both true. It feels like my faith is stuck, my faith is dry, I'm living the faith of a six-year-old and I'm 21, and we know we need to go on a journey. And that journey of, of faith, the prayer, of reading, of whatever, it, it does bear fruit. And we feel, yes, it's the Lord doing it, but he wanted me to make a choice. Always, when we go deeper, it is a step of faith. It's a step of faith. And you know I've been talking about vocation for the last few weeks. It is an invitation. It's a, it's a call. It's a shout sometimes, or it is a tiny whisper. But in our lives, in your life, right now, the Lord is, is whispering or talking or shouting in so many different ways. And he's asking you to say yes and to take a step of faith. And always the consequence of this deepening, this step, is that prayer becomes more real for us and more important in some maybe small way. In other words, the experience, a moment, comes into our real life and gives it shape. And the shape of that new life is that we are people of prayer. Again, not binary, not tick or cross, but just our sense of being called to grow in friendship with the Lord is partly manifested through a growing in the life of our prayer, whatever form or shape that takes. I really hope that in your own unique way, each one of you can have an experience, again, that word in inverted commas, of personal conversion over your time. At college now of coming to know that the stories of the gospel are not just in the past that Jesus longs to know you in friendship that he loves you personally that he's with you and looking at you and walking with you just as he was in Peter's house in the streets of Galilee on the mountain with the Lord that his words and his healing touch and his spiritual power to cast out the demons that haunt you and the afflictions that burden you, that this same power that was working in Galilee is working in your life now, if only we could be a little bit more open to it and a little bit more sensitive to it. This is real for us as it was for the people in the Gospel. And for you to desire this, to want it, to long for it, and to ask for it in prayer, to say, Lord, help me to grow in my faith, help to bring my faith alive, help me to know you, help me to go deeper. Everything I've said is in these words from the psalm. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. 
It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face.